We've seen how to create reference in Rust. The opposite operation, the operation that undoes the reference, is called dereference. It will allow us to access the actual data behind the reference so that we can work with it, including changing the value. Here is a mutable string and a mutable reference to this string. Now let's say that I want to modify this original value, Rust. There are several ways to modify this original data. Here I'll show you how to modify the original data using dereference. For example, let's add a question mark to the original data. To access the actual value, we need to dereference the reference. So we say asterisk and then followed by the reference S1. So now we have access to the actual value. Let's add a question mark to this actual value. Plus equals followed by question mark. Okay, so this is an example of dereferencing. We dereference to get the actual value and then operate on the actual value. In this case, we added a question mark. Let's print the original data. And then we get the value Rust followed by the question mark. What will happen if we pass a mutable reference to a function and then inside that function dereference the reference? When we dereference, is it going to take ownership of the value? Well, let's find out. Let's first create a function. Let's call this modify. And it's going to take in a mutable reference to a string. Let's say s uptype mute string. And to modify this string, we've already seen an example. Here it is. I'll just copy this and then paste it here. And then change this to s. For the input, it's going to get a mutable reference to a string. Inside the function, it's going to dereference the value and then modify the actual value. So the question here is, does this take ownership? There's only one way to find out. Let's actually call this function and then try to print the original string inside the main function. So first, let's create a string. And then let's call the function modify. Pass in a mutable reference to the string. And then let's try to print the original string afterwards. Save the file and the code compiles. So now we can conclude that this doesn't take ownership. The last topic that I'll explain in this video is deref coercion. What it basically means is that it automatically dereferences in some situations. So for example, let's say that we have a value. Let's say that x equals 1. And then let's create two references to this value. Let y will be a reference to x and let z will again be a reference to x. Now let's try adding these two references. So say that w equals y plus z. Now normally you would think that you would not be able to add a reference. Here what it's saying is add a reference to x with another reference to x. So here it looks like it doesn't make sense. What we need to do here instead is first dereference it. Dereference the reference to x which will be 1 and over here again dereference the reference to x which will be 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2. So if you save the file the code compiles. It makes sense. However this doesn't make sense. We're trying to add two references. But when we save the file, the code still compiles. What it's doing here is Rust is automatically dereferencing these two references. So let's print this out. Print ln. Then let's execute the code. And we get w is equal to 2. 1 plus 1 equals 2. So these are some examples of dereferencing in Rust. 